Hi, I'm James Turner with MSI Tech. I'm in the lab today at MSI, and we're going to be going over the E1 4005 series industrial remote access device. This guy is very unique in the fact that he allows you to communicate securely over the internet to your machine network. Now, he's got one WAN port for your wide area network. He's got four LAN ports for your uh, local area network uh, devices as well as one serial port that can be used for uh, serial connectivity. So let's get started by plugging in the power supply. We're going to go ahead and plug in power, our little uh, Phoenix Contact uh, power adapter, and we can snap it into a DIN rail. We'll start by plugging in our LAN connection. So I'm going to use uh, LAN port number one. This is a standard 10100. Um, Ethernet straight through cable, doesn't have to be a crossover cable. And then I'm also going to plug into the WAN port a uh, just a standard Ethernet connection that contains my internet connection. So from here, we're ready to get started. So to begin, we're going to go to wiki.e1.biz. And this is the support site for E1. I'm going to come down here and click on E1 Support, and then we're going to click Download. Here we've got an option of downloading firmware and software, and today we want softwares. And the program we want is called eBuddy. This particular program is just used for things like um, configuring the IP address, upgrading uh, firmware. So once we start, we can just step through the normal default process um, and once it's installed we're going to go ahead and let it run and here we're going to again see the options that we have we can set the IP address we can update firmware we can back up and restore our application currently running on the E1 um, we can also update eBuddy to go uh, to get the latest firmware so, but today we're more interested in setting the IP address of our device. We're going to click on set IP address. Now, we need to make sure that we're on the same network and the way we do that is by going to the start menu, clicking on control panel, and then coming down here to network and sharing center. Click on local area connection and properties. In order for us to talk though, again, we need to make sure that we're on the same network. So we're going to use the following IP address. And I'm going to specify 10.0.0.100. Um, this is just a generic IP address. It really doesn't matter. I just need to be on the same network. And I'm going to specify the subnet as 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 that way I can be assured that we're on the same network and we don't really care about the default gateway so we'll hit, click OK here and close and close this window and we can close our network sharing center now we know that we're on the same network now I don't want my E1 to be that IP address so on this next screen I can change the IP address from 10.0.0.53 to for example 1 which is what I want it to be now keep in mind this is going to be the machine network IP schema so this is the IP addresses that all of our machines or any of our remote devices need to be on so this is the LAN side of things so it uh, pushes out the information this may take a, a second or two but once it's done it will finish and now I can talk to my Ewan's web interface by going to the browser and typing in the IP address of the new IP address of the E1. So let's go to configuration and here let's click on wizards. This is the simplest way to set up the E1. Now the first one we need is to configure the internet connection. Here we've got a couple of options here we can set uh, modem connection or we can set the Ethernet WAN connection and for this we're setting up our WAN connection that's how we need it now here we 
I have an option of setting this up as DHCP, static, or boot P. Today we're going to do it as DHCP because I know that my customer's network is going to give me an IP address and it's going to give me the entire IP stack including the IP address, the subnet, the gateway, and any DNS servers I need. We do have an option for using a proxy server uh, to connect to talk to him. This is if for some reason the customer's network has a proxy server. Um, it's a good idea to get with IT and find this information out because they may want to specify a user account for that proxy. If it's a transparent proxy then it really may not matter but for uh, any time you have a proxy involved it does complicate things so you want to make sure uh, to to see if there's a proxy uh, in place. Check with IT for that. But here we're going to click next and we're going to go ahead and test our WAN connection by checking this box and then clicking test. What it's going to do now is it's going to go make sure that it gets an IP address because we set it as DHCP and make sure that it has all the DNS information that it needs in order to connect to talk to him. And here it does. So we can click done. Now, our next step is to create our talk to him account on the E1. So we select talk to him and hit next here. So here we're going to need our activation key. This is the activation key that we get from eCatcher. This is that special key, that magic key that we need. So we're going to open up eCatcher and here we need to log into our account and check out our device. So we're going to select our device, hit the gears for the details, and then hit the wrench, which is going to give us our activation key. We're going to select this, and there's a little button here on the right. We click that. That copies it to our clipboard. Now we can plug that number or that key into the web page and hit next. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to associate that particular device to our account. It's going to step through the process, it's going to make sure it has a WAN connection, it's going to test different means of connecting, UDP connection, HTTP connection, and then finally it's going to test its connection via VPN to talk to M. Once it's completed, we click done. That's all we really need as far as the website's concerned. Now, if we go back to eCatcher, hit the back button one more time, we can see it's already connected and our E1's LAN IP address is showing up. And here, we're actually seeing the status of it as online and when we're ready, we can just simply hit connect. See how simple that was? Hey, thanks for watching. And for more videos like these, subscribe to our channel. And as always, if you ever have questions, you can always contact us at MSI. Or you can contact me, james.turner at msitech.com.